Okay, well, I wanted to do shark as early as the mid-70s because I think it goes back to when I was at school and I think it became blatantly apparent from our history books that black history was not being given the kind of precedence that it deserved. Uh, our white textbooks primarily dealt with white history and black history was always seen from a white perspective. And I felt that there was a big gap in the market in terms of interpreting black history both in uh, our history books but definitely on the screen. And this goes back uh, 50, 60 years. I mean, the way that blacks have been depicted in Hollywood, for instance, has always been this sort of Tarzan-esque, uh, you know, uh, jungle bunny, stupid, uh, moronic kind of savage uh, running around in a funny little loincloth with sort of quaint dialogue. And I felt that it was time to, to give black history an entirely new perspective, give it the dignity and the respect that it deserved in terms of cinematic interpretation. So that was really the driving force uh, behind it. It then took a further nearly nine years to, to really get it off the ground and convince people that um, just maybe the audience might be interested in seeing a story which had a primarily uh, black angle to it and gave a sort of what I felt a truer representation of uh, black history and culture and tradition, etc. Yeah. But if you put that in the context of South Africa, yes. which is prior to the of South Africa, um, wasn't that a little bit unusual? Because yes, it was. Even, even coming from your background, it's just talking a little bit about that. Yes. Uh, there's no question that uh, historically in this country, certainly after the Favut era, after Favut, the grand, apart, you know, the sort of grand architect of the apartheid strategy, certainly it had been formulated since the 40s. And certainly we cannot blame the Africana entirely because I think uh, the British influences here, back to the old colonial days, certainly had an influence on everything that white people did pertaining to black people and certainly historically that, that was the same. But I think if one begins to, if you just have a little bit of self-thinking, if you just think a little for yourself as, as uh, it didn't make sense. I'll tell you what it was. It did not make sense to me that um, in everything that happened with the Zulus, going right back to the inception of the nation, there were certain things that didn't make sense because in our history books, basically Shaka was interpreted as a sort of raving, lunatic, mad savage, right, with nothing between the ears and did lunatic things like march regiments over cliffs and at the drop of a hat slaughtered people because they happened to sneeze next to them, all this kind of rubbish. Okay, didn't make sense that a man who ruled like that could command the allegiance and the respect of a huge nation and basically built an empire. There had to be more to the man. There had to be more in terms of what he was doing for his people that kept him in power, okay, even in those times. It wasn't enough just to be a... So those things didn't make sense. And you began to feel also, if you looked at the, the history books, there would be pages and pages and pages about... Uh, uh, our, our heroic figures, our, and then you know they dismiss someone like Shaka Zulu, who had created an empire which kept the Boers and the British Empire on the run for another 50 years. They would devote sort of two very trite paragraphs to this sort of lunatic savage. Didn't make sense. And of course, I was fascinated just by the the the, the whole history of of, of the. I mean, I'm fascinated by Zulu history, and as I am by African history. I think there's an extraordinary story to be told. So that was basically it. But yes, it was unusual for, uh, for, for I suppose, um, uh, someone uh, at that age, inundated with the propagandistic influence of the education system, to try and interpret that. Yeah, sure. Uh, 